Okay, so hey everyone, uh, my name is Galiuna, and this is the long form version of the presentation of our paper, Decision Making Under Miscalibration for ITCS 2023. This is joint work with Guy Rafno. We are both from the Weizmann Institute. Okay, so our focus on this work is on a setting that we call from predictions to decisions. What do I mean by predictions? Basically, we suppose that we have a universe of individuals X, say, given by their covariates or features, and we have access to some risk predictor. So basically a mapping from every individual to a value in, zero, uh, in the interval zero, one. So for example, we wanna estimate um, this person's risk of having a cardiovascular event in some certain follow-up period. By decisions, I mean that the way we end up using this predictor P is to inform multiple downstream binary decision problems. Okay, these can be varied. For example, should a specific individual be prescribed some medication? Should they be subject to some medical, medical treatment, etc.? Okay, and for this talk, I'm gonna call all of these decisions uh, treat or don't treat decisions, but this is just because I have this medical example in mind. Okay, so basically we will instantiate this in a utility-based framework. So we suppose that we have a distribution D over individual and binary outcome pairs. As I mentioned, we have this risk predictor P. A treatment threshold would just be a number J in the interval zero one, where we understand that if a person's risk, predicted risk is above the threshold, then they receive a prediction of one. And a downstream binary decision would just be parameterized by its cost structure. So think of this as the relative costs of making, say, correct versus incorrect predictions, right? False positives, true positives, etc. So Basically, all of these, uh, this quadruple of costs, the distribution, the predictor, and the threshold, together, this determines some notion of utility from treatment. And a concept that I'll be referring to is that we say that the treatment is harmful if the utility actually ends up being lower than the utility that you could have obtained without using the predictor at all. Right, so even if you don't have any risk prediction, you can always just decide to either treat everyone or treat no one. That also gives you some notion of utility. So one benchmark certainly is that we don't want to be worse than what these two strategies would have taken. This would be a harmful treatment. Okay, so for us, the decision-making problem is basically uh, given the cost structure, the distribution, and the predictor that we now think of as just fixed, how do we determine the treatment threshold? Okay, and there's an existing but partial answer to this question, which is that if the predictor in question is perfectly calibrated, then there is a threshold that I'll denote as J star. In the literature, it's called a therapeutic threshold that guarantees that thresholding P at J star will cause no harm in the sense that I've mentioned before. And kind of the nice thing about this threshold is that it completely uh, does not depend on both the distribution and the predictor in question. So it's just a function of the cost structure in question. And here the requirement for perfect calibration basically means that for every possible risk value B, if you look at all the individuals whose prediction was precisely this value V, and you look at their eventual outcomes under the distribution D, then precisely the V fraction of those outcomes are positive. Okay, so this is perfect calibration. Um, but unfortunately, this is a partial answer because it breaks down under miscalibration. Okay, this has already been shown in some earlier work. For example, uh, 
Caster and Vickers actually show through simulations that if you start with a calibrated predictor, but then you gradually induce mis miscalibration, then eventually, and, and it even happens uh, fairly fast, you can make treating at this therapeutic threshold, J star, actually harmful. Um, okay, so let's start talking about decision-making, basically this selection of thresholds under miscalibration, when we do anticipate that the predictor that we have access to is not necessarily perfectly calibrated. Okay, so here I'm, I'm denoting a case where the therapeutic threshold J star is 0 0.05. As I've mentioned, this kind of already tells me something about the cost structure of the problem that we have in mind here. Specifically, right intuitively, it makes sense. The threshold is low. It means that the benefit that I would expect from making true positive predictions, so really identifying the people who need treatment, uh, is much greater than the harm that I would anticipate I'll receive from making incorrect uh, treatment decisions. Okay, so let's look at, say, the collection of women who have a prediction of, say, 0 0.04, so slightly under the therapeutic threshold. Do I want to treat them or do I not want to treat them? So if the predictor was perfectly calibrated also on this subpopulation of women, then I know the answer, right? I don't want to treat them because on average, this group would not benefit from treating them. But what happens under miscalibration, now it's a bit less obvious, right? I can use the therapeutic threshold J star, but if I then find out that my predictor was underestimating the risk in this group, then I would actually end up regretting not treating these people. Um, on the other hand, if I'm tempted to then use a lower threshold, but then I found out that my predictor was actually overestimating the risk in women, then I might regret having treated these individuals. Okay, so the point here is that there are competing concerns and a priori it's not clear how to balance them because kind of the, the stuff, the errors that I can see under a certain bound of alpha miscalibration don't really have a symmetric effect here because of the fact that the very nature of this decision problem is that it's asymmetric, right? The cost structure is not exactly the same. Okay, so I wanna argue that this question of um, looking at the impact of decisions on protected demographic subgroups is also a, a practically uh, relevant uh, concern. And indeed, there's been some earlier work. This is just one example by a study by Collins and Altman, basically showing that the Framingham risk score, which is a very popular risk score for estimating cardiovascular risk, um, if you look at it, at a, a, do an evaluation at a British cohort, then they show that it overestimates the risk in women which indeed results in a harmful model if you end up using it for thresholds 20% or higher. Okay, so these kinds of concerns really arise in practice. Um, at this point, something you might ask is, okay, what about multi-calibration, right? If we know that calibration is important and we know that we care about the impact of what happens to subsets of the population, then we might wanna ensure ahead of time that the predictor we're using is multi-calibrated. Okay, and while this is definitely true and something that's important to do in this case, it doesn't entirely solve the problem because in practice, we would always have a finite number of training samples also for this procedure of multi-calibration and presumably a rich class C. So while multi-calibration would allow us to get kind of a, an overall bound on the maximum calibration error over these subgroups, this bound would not necessarily be uh, very close to zero. So some calibration errors are inevitable and there is still the question of how these are potentially amplified in the decision-making process. Okay, so this is the, the starting point for our work. So 
basically you can think of it in the following way. The question that we put forth is if J star or this therapeutic threshold is, as we know, the optimal threshold you would apply to a perfectly calibrated risk predictor, irrespective of the distribution and the specifics of the predictor, is there kind of a similarly optimal threshold, J hat, that you should be applying if you know you're faced with an imperfectly calibrated predictor? Okay, so this is our high level motivated question. And of course, it raises a lot of kind of follow up questions when we want to instantiate this framework, specifically, which solution concept do we use here to determine optimality in this new context? And then what does this threshold actually end up looking? And is it even different from J star? And when? Um, okay, so I'll. I'll give a kind of a general overview of our results, and then I'll I'll say a bit more in the next two slides. Um, first of all, regarding the solution concept that we use, we define a notion of regret under bounded miscalibration, and then we propose that the threshold you should use is, in some sense, the minimax threshold. We want to minimize the maximal regret that you can obtain under bounded miscalibration. Um, in terms of what this threshold actually looks like, our main kind of technical effort is to show that this optimization problem actually has a simple closed form, closed form solution. We have a different, uh, a bunch of different ones depending on how you actually choose to measure miscalibration. And interestingly, uh, our results show that this new threshold differs from the therapeutic threshold, J star, precisely for decision problems that have very asymmetric costs. So I'll discuss it in a bit, but you can think of it as kind of providing a rigorous uh, explanation for this behavior uh, that seems intuitive, which is that we want to be, in some sense, conservative under the uncertainty that's induced by the miscalibration. Okay, so to say a bit more from a technical perspective about this regret uh, minimization uh, approach. So basically given uh, a cost structure and a distribution D prime, for a predictor P prime, we say that the regret that you obtain from thresholding it at J1 rather than at J2 is just the difference in utilities from the utility that you would get from thresholding at J2 versus J1. Okay, so this is relatively straightforward. Now the main component is that we look at a kind of worst case version of this regret. So basically, if you want to use a threshold J, what's the worst that could happen under this setting? So we take the maximum over both any potential other threshold that we could have used, J prime, and most importantly, over all the pairs of predictors and distributions that conform to this uh, calibration error constraint. So basically the calibration error of P prime when evaluated on the distribution D prime should be at most alpha. Okay, and then we look at the regret in this case. So putting it all together, our solution concept J hat, given a specific cost structure and a parameter alpha that we use to denote kind of the anticipated level of miscalibration that we might expect to see, is we should use the threshold that minimizes this maximal regret. Okay, and two important components. Uh, first of all, by design, we made this solution concept also distribution free, like the therapeutic threshold, right? The, neither the distribution nor the predictor in question appear here for J prime because they're already kind of implicitly a part in this worst case optimization problem. Um, and the second uh, remark is that while we can very cleanly state this optimization problem, 
it's not necessarily clear what does it tell us about the solution J hack, right? Like in, in case in principle, this is a minimax uh, problem over an exponential such space. So as I mentioned, the, the main technical effort in our paper is to show that you can actually obtain uh, simple closed form expressions for this uh, threshold J hat. We do this under two notions of approximate miscalibration. The details are less important, but these are both popular notions. One is the expected calibration error and the other is the maximum calibration error. And basically to do this, we utilize the fact that uh, as it turns out, this worst case regret that I've discussed before always ends up being maximized by a very specific predictor. Okay, actually a predictor that is only supported on at most two levels. And then for this restricted class of predictors, we can actually analyze things directly so it becomes a bit more easier. Okay, so visually, this is how things look like. So here I'm plotting the uh, threshold J hat as a function of J star to show the comparison between J star and J hat. And we can see that kind of for intermediate values of J star, so think of it as decision problems that don't have um, a particularly asymmetric cost structure, J hat is just identical to J star. But on the other way, on the other hand, as we near the edges, the behavior is kind of more extreme, leaning towards the more conservative side of just uh, treating everyone or treating no one, depending on um, exactly the cost structure. Okay, so as I mentioned before, this is kind of uh, a rigorous explanation for this sort of intuitive behavior that we might expect, which is that you want to be more conservative given the asymmetric nature of the decision problem. Okay, so... One important uh, point I want to mention is about this uh, choice of the worst case regret. So one thing that probably stood out to you is that we essentially assumed in the way we formalized the, the objective that we don't know anything about either the predictor, the distribution, or this collection of, of sets when we actually end up uh, choosing the therapeutic, the threshold, uh, right? But in, in practice, there may be cases where this is not the situation. Maybe we just have a single fixed predictor in mind and we wanna use a threshold that actually depends on it. Maybe we have a fixed collection of sets in mind. Maybe we assume that we have access to unlabeled examples when we actually do the thresholding procedure. And there are a bunch of different other variations. Um, in this sense, it's a bit similar to literature on domain adaptation, right? Where we can kind of go from not assuming anything about what we know about the new distribution as opposed to building in some more assumptions. Um, so technically, these assumptions are very easy to build into our framework, right? You just need to define the same notion of maximal regret, but take the maximum with respect to a more restricted class of uh, predictor and distribution pairs, for example. But then you end up with a much more uh, potentially more challenging optimization problem. Okay? So I'm just putting it out here to say it's very natural uh, to ask uh, what happens when we make this addi these additional assumptions, uh, right? Does the effect of miscalibration change, I think it's an, an interesting uh, direction for additional work. Um, and just to wrap up with another, I think, high level uh, discussion point, basically in this work, we show that even slight miscalibration might require taking this fact into account in the subsequent stages of the pipeline, specifically how we translate risk predictions to binary decisions. I think more generally, it's helpful to think about things in this way. So breaking down this you know, algorithmic decision-making problem into the steps and the stages 
that it consists of. And I think this is very useful because kind of it allows us to start thinking also from a theoretical and rigorous perspective about how these different stages might end up impacting each other. Okay, so for example, it can suggest useful desiderata for the earlier stages. Right here, we basically kind of showed another reason for why we want risk predictors that are multi-calibrated. Um, but it can also suggest different behavior for what you want to do in the later stages of the pipeline, depending on what we anticipate kind of went wrong in the earlier stages. So in some sense, I think what we did here is one specific instantiation of a much more general problem uh, that I think can be a useful component in kind of thinking theoretically about this uh, high level objective of reliable computing or reliable decision making. Um, so that's it. Thank you very much and happy uh, to have more follow up discussions.